The Doppler effect. So we have a single goal for this session, and it's simply to introduce the Doppler effect. So what is it? Well, it is, in effect, the shift in frequency of a wave that occurs when either the source or the detector, or both, could be, is moving. Lots of applications. Uh, you can do medical tests using ultrasound. You can do sort of Doppler studies of the heart, for instance. Uh, the police can catch you speeding. And there's lots of astronomical applications. And the astronomical ones, and even the police radar, often use electromagnetic waves. Note that electromagnetic waves work a little bit differently than the Doppler effect does for sound waves, and we'll be focusing on sound waves. Okay, so let's just start with the basics when both the source and the observer are at rest. So the source is a little dot in the center of the picture there, and the observer is kind of a little black rectangle off to the right. And so what we have is the usual relationship connecting frequency, speed, and wavelength. F is V over lambda, and V here is the speed of the sound through the medium itself. Okay, so now we'll just start with what happens with a moving observer. So on the left, again, we just see, just for reference, the original pattern where the source and the observer are at rest, and on the right, we see the observer moving toward that source, and if you're that observer, you do indeed encounter more waves per unit time than you did before. You, you encounter them at a higher frequency. And this is because, in effect, the motion of the observer changes the wave speed, the wave speed with respect to the observer we're talking about. If you simply camp the waves, you will see that you've encountered about one, two, three, four, four and a half waves when uh, you're at rest, and so is the uh, source. And on the right, if you count them, you'll see that you've encountered about six and a half waves. Okay, so what do things look like from the observer's perspective? Then basically the entire pattern travels toward you unchanged. Again, on the left, we're seeing for reference just what things look like for the stationary observer. And then really this is you moving toward the observer, but from your reference frame, it's like the whole pattern is moving toward you. And so you do encounter more waves per unit time. Okay, so what happens is the waves relative to you travel at a higher speed. Of course, they're not actually traveling through the medium any faster, but relative to you they are. So this effective speed is V prime is the V through the uh, medium plus the V of the observer. And of course, if you move away from the source, then that would be a minus sign instead. Okay, so we'll say in general, we'll say the Observed frequency f prime is the new effective speed v prime over lambda. v prime we write as v plus or minus v o, and we use the plus sign when the observer moves toward the source and the minus sign when the observer moves away. Okay, so we can take our equation v plus or minus v over lambda, multiply it simply through by v over v, and we get v over lambda, but that's just what f is, the original f, what you would hear if you were at rest, and that's multiplied by V plus or minus V over V. So you see there's a shift in the frequency by this factor V plus or minus VO over V. Okay, so uh, the frequency you hear goes up if you move toward the source and it goes down if you move away. Let's just look at that moving away scenario. So on the left again, just for reference, we've got the stationary situation, both the observer and the uh, source are stationary on the right. The observer is now running away from the source and encountering fewer waves per unit time. Okay, so let's move on to a moving source. And the situation definitely looks a little bit different now. For one thing, the pattern is very asymmetric. And again, that's because the source is moving and of course, the center of each wave is, you know, where the source was when it let that wave go. And if the source moves, then all the centers are at different places. Unlike the other case where the source was at rest, it was a very symmetric pattern. 
Okay, so for the moving source, we're effectively changing the wavelength. You can see the wavelength shrink on the side that the observer uh, source, sorry, the source is moving toward, and it expands on the other side, uh, the side where the uh, source is moving away from. Okay, so we have an effective shifted wavelength. We'll call it lambda prime. That's v minus or plus v s over f. And again, use the top sign when the source moves away. Sorry. It's very important. Use the top sign when the source moves toward the observer and the bottom sign when it moves away. Okay, so the detected frequency here is f prime is v over lambda prime, but lambda prime is v minus or plus v s over f, so we can write that in the end as the observed frequency f prime is f, the original frequency times this factor v over v minus or plus v s. Okay, so now we've got, sort of got these different cases. If the uh, observer moves with the source doesn't, we've got one equation. We've got this other one now with the source moves, but the observer doesn't. We've got this one. Well, what if everything's moving, you know? So what we can do is just sort of glue our equations together, and we end up with this. So this is the single general purpose Doppler effect equation that works for sound. Doesn't work for electromagnetic waves, interestingly enough, but for sound. And again, note that these signs are written in a very particular order here, right? Plus or minus on the top in the numerator and minus or plus on the bottom in the denominator. For both sets, use the top sign when the motion is toward and the bottom sign when the motion is away. Okay, so F prime represents the frequency observed by the observer. F is the frequency that the source emits. And then we've got this factor, v plus or minus v observer, divided by v minus or plus v source to reflect how much that frequency is shifted. Okay, so that is it for our introduction to the Doppler effect.